uh, been introduced to the sled once again. So uh, huh. <laughs> I'm going to get you on the prowler. When, when you get out of here, we'll get you on the prowler. Uh, okay. Take the, oh. take the sled and times it by 10 in terms of as long as, the difficulty. As, <laughs> as long as you don't sit on it, that's fine. Um, oh, I'll be standing on it yelling at you. <laughs> I'll have my whistle and everything. <laughs> Welcome to the Fitpreneurs, the show that will help you flex your business muscles so you can make more money and live the life you really want. No more complaining, whining, or being a whip. It's time to pump up your fitness business and push yourself beyond your comfort zone so no girly men or lazy ladies allowed. It's time for me to do some push-ups and turn things over to my friends AJ Roberts and Simon Lovell. Hasta la vista. Welcome to another episode of The Fitpreneurs. I'm AJ Roberts, and alongside me is... The beautiful Simon Lovell. Oh, I didn't say it that time, so you have to say it for yourself. <laughs> awesome. So this is uh, episode number 26, man, getting up there. Um, but uh, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, make sure to head over to our website, thefitpreneurs.com. Subscribe so you get updates on all the episodes we release. Also, head over to iTunes, subscribe there, leave us a five-star review if you like what we do. And for those of you not on an iPhone, then uh, look for an app on your uh, mobile device called Pocket Casts. Apparently, it allows you to listen uh, if you're on uh, any of the other networks. So uh, thanks to uh, Mark, I think it's Kihain is how you say his last name, uh, for sharing that with us um, and uh, our listeners. So, Simon, what are we talking about today? Well, AJ, you did the show notes, and uh, the, the show notes show the name of the last episode, so I have no idea what the episode's called. Oh, I must have sent you the wrong link. So, uh, we're talking, oh, that old chestnut. Uh, we're talking about how to unlock your genius today. Yeah. So um, basically, how to discover your hidden talents, how to bring them out, and how to leverage those to the max so that you can operate in your genius and be more productive, uh, be more creative, and essentially grow faster than you uh, are currently growing. So... Simon, you should have the right notes now, so hopefully we can get to that. But uh, before we go in, as always, let's do a little catch-up. You've been all over the place. I've been all over the place, and uh, you have some cool stuff to share. Yeah, so, well, I was in in Whistler doing some skiing. Uh, I think we mentioned that on the last episode. Came back, got myself a trainer four times a week, hitting it hard, getting back into shape again, super shape. So I'm feeling good. I've uh, been introduced to the sled once again so uh oh, i'm gonna get you on the prowler when, when you get out of here we get you on the prowler uh, okay take the, take the sled uh, and times it by 10 in terms of the as difference long as, <laughs> as, as long as you don't sit on it that's fine oh um, i'll be standing on it yelling at you i love my whistle and everything <laughs> so, so i'm enjoying i'm enjoying getting back into training again still still waiting to hear back on my visa which is a sore spot for me um at the moment because i really want to be in uh, san diego but uh, that's coming through. But great news. We're both going to be – why don't we re- reveal what's going to be happening in April? Well, of course, my mastermind's happening in April. But apart from that, Necker Island. We are going to be on Necker Island with Richard Branson. And uh, we're going to be recording our second video podcast from Necker Island. Yeah, you know, um, I've been a part of Mavericks for for a while, and um, Simon came on, and it's funny. I've been invited to go, and uh, f- you know how it is when you you plan to do something and you you put it off and you put it off, and so finally, we're, we're I'm going to get the opportunity to go, and Simon's going to be there too. So that's going to be awesome. Um, you know, both of us looked up to Richard growing up. It's uh, it's fun. I think pretty much any entrepreneur from England. Uh, looks up to Richard Branson and grew up watching his antics and seeing all the the crazy stuff he has done over the years and um, all the businesses he has built. So uh, I think that uh, anyone from the UK especially has that connection to Richard. And of course, over here, he's made a, a huge splash. And so that's all part of his uh, his uh, charity foundation, Virgin Unite, and uh, we'll be donating to that and, and going over there to support that cause and hang out with him for a couple of days and uh, the other Mavericks, which would be which would be awesome. Those guys are always a hoot. A bunch of them are actually here right now in uh, San Diego. They just had their um, kind of annual retreat. I think they were off skiing as well, and a bunch of them came from that straight here for Traffic and Conversion Summit that's going on, which is Digital Marketers' big event every year. Um, I remember, actually, Simon, you came to the one in San Francisco with me, which was their second one. And they moved mm-hmm. it here to San Diego. And uh, I think this is their fourth or fifth year now. I've been to every one. It's amazing seeing their growth 
Uh, they went from about 500 people to around about 3,000 people is the, the number I heard for um, attendees this year. Mm. And, uh, yeah, so my, every- my Facebook, my Facebook news feed is full of, full of uh, pictures of people at the Traffic and Conversion Summit. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, everyone is here, so uh, I've been you know, meeting after meeting after meeting. Um, so I haven't had much time to attend any of the conference. Uh, I've been meeting with different people, people in the fitness industry uh, here um, from all over the world. So that's been fun catching up with those guys. And then, of course, other people from the marketing world that I'm connected to as well are in town. So it's good to see all the familiar faces. And uh, I'm glad it's here in San Diego. It's nice and warm right now. I keep telling them to uh, keep delaying Simon's immigration so he keeps them <laughs> back in the UK. Um, but uh, they keep telling me at some point we've got to let him in. So um, he'll probably be here next year. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it here next year. It seems like they've outgrown the hotel, which is a, a cool thing to see. Uh, maybe they'll move to the convention center. But it's really cool. Um, it's really cool to have everyone in town and be connecting with those people. I've been bouncing uh, to different masterminds recently. I was in Vegas and uh, out here for a, a mastermind too. Um, and uh, just various different things, going to different events and connecting with different people. And it's been a hoot and a holler, and uh, I'm glad to be back here in San Diego for a little bit and uh, not traveling. And Because, uh, like I said, the weather's warm here, and it seems like it's freezing cold everywhere else. So I'm not sure if it, everyone's going to be able to go home this week. Some of them may get stuck here, which isn't a bad place to get stuck. But uh, the East Coast has been hit pretty hard with snow and stuff like that. So it definitely makes me grateful at this time of year to, to be able to look outside the sunshine, the palm trees, and, uh, and know that I can drive on the road without uh, snow tires and things like that. So, um, yeah, good times. And, um, you know, Simon should be here soon, which will add to that. There's a good community here. And um, it seems like, you know, entrepreneurial spirit is alive here. And startup community is pretty big here as well. And then uh, lots of fitness professionals here in San Diego, I think. Um, actually, what I've heard per capita, there's the most gyms in, in the world. So, very fitness mm. orientated, and we got How? awesome restaurants and stuff like that too. I just did a a review actually for a, a world travel site that wanted to know healthy restaurants here in San Diego, so I work with them on the different restaurants, and there is a ton. So always good places to eat and to socialize and things like that, which you don't get that Stop opportunity. Stop it! Stop it! In the rest Stop of the it. world, it's so. killing me. <laughs> this is killing me. Um, how's the how's the new puppy? Oh yeah, yeah, I've got a new puppy, Rogue. She's uh, Tara. She's uh, absolutely Rogue. crazy. And uh, the other two dogs are still, still adjusting. Um, Hulk's boisterous uh, child side has come out again, and uh, Storm is doing her normal grumpy grumps. So um, they're just getting used to the new dynamic uh, with that. But uh, it's been uh, it's <laughs> been crazy, you know. It's like it's like having a new newborn in the house. Uh, the only the only difference is you can actually just put them in the kennels and, and lock them up. You can't do that with a baby. So um, it's been, it's been a it's been an interesting few weeks for sure. So anyway, nice stuff. So I wanted to just uh, wind back a little bit to Richard Branson uh, because I think uh, talking about him and the Necroid and stuff that's going to happen is actually really relevant to this episode. Um, you know, something I really. Um, is in, always inspired me about Richard is, um, you know, not only his passion, uh, but one thing that stands out in particular for him with me, which I've been passionate about too, is, uh, is the, the public relations. I always like, you know, when he was promoting the Virgin weddings, I think it was where he got dressed up in a wedding dress and the fact that he's, he's willing to, you know, be make a fool out of himself in order to promote his company because he's just having fun he's just you know tapping into part of his genius there and something you know um which i think we can all learn from that is 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 getting into flow state and um for you aj what what would you say is your biggest zone of genius um that you have uh, you know over the years you've kind of cultivated and that's where you find your 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 biggest state of flow and where you where time kind of um, seems to disappear. Yeah, for me, there's obviously the athletic side, and, and um, there's different there's different areas of flow that you're going to. But on the business front, you know, really for me, it's zooming out and simplifying. I just I look at things completely different than everyone else, and I didn't really ever realize that that was a, a talent in its in and of itself. And you know, in a in a in a room full of uh, really really bright people with masterminds and things like that, I seem to be the one who can always take that bird's eye view and really kind of I actually more like the outer space view and and look at where they are and what they're trying to do and then be able to zoom back in and create create a simple path to that. And so for me, I love talking about that stuff. I love talking about vision, you know, 
and helping people, you know, build the vision and then see the path to that. So that's really where my genius comes in. And, and uh, you know, we've worked together and I've, you know, worked with a lot of other coaches in uh, in the industry and, and outside the industry and seems to be normally um, – my my contribution is that ability to 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 zoom out and really see the bigger picture and the bigger vision and and then and then come back in to where where we're at and what what do we need to do to move towards that so i think that you know that comes from a lot as a kid having huge goals and huge visions and and uh, figuring out how to get to where I want to go. You know, first step was coming to America, obviously, uh, for basketball, as that was the direction I thought I'd want to go. And then when I was powerlifting, it was moving and training, you know, at the strongest gym in the world and then getting into the marketing front and, and connecting and working, you know, working alongside and partnering with the top internet marketers in the world and, and basically running their companies for them and having that experience to, to run, te- you know, a $10 million company last year and uh, multi-million dollar companies um, before that. Uh, you don't get that experience without being able to kind of, you know, vision, have that vision in the first place and then figure a path out how to get there. So I think to me, that's where my genius is lies. I'm a very much a creative uh, quick start. And so a big thinker, big ideas and, and big plans. What about you? Uh, I think for me, if I look back to when I was doing like lunchbox diet and being, you know, out of even out of, out of school, when I had the, you know, working on video games, magazines and stuff, a, a far a, a, a big difference from uh, being in health and fitness, working sat there playing video games all day. But same thing, it was about for me, you know, I would uh, as AJ cracks open his monster, um, <laughs> um, I would. Uh, kind of ditch the academic classes and I would be wanting to create things. So I'm a very um, creative driven person and, but also linking that with action. So I'll get an idea and I action fast idea, action, idea, action. I don't really think about it. I just, you know, test on a small scale and then, and then move within that. So I think if I look at generally, I would say creative, but now uh, over the years, I think like you've probably noticed doing video and presenting when I'm doing, when I'm on camera, time goes away i mean you know i'm i'm just in a different state of mind and i really enjoy doing it like when we do these podcasts for example it's a fine example of when i lose uh, track of time and when we do especially do the, the when we did the video podcast in in thailand i just i just love coming up with new ideas and, and executing so yeah for me and, and obviously mix, mixing that with uh, strategic as well but uh I just love being creative, coming up with ideas and taking an idea all the way through to a, a success. Yeah, you're more of a creative follow-through um, guy. You know, once you once you have the plan, boom, it goes into place. So it's very important, and, and everyone has genius. I think that's what uh, most people miss. Like a lot of people grow up thinking that, like, I don't have a talent, or I don't have the genetics, or I don't have the brains, I don't have this. What's interesting is, is you know, studies have said it, you know. Kids who take tests, 95% show genius in, an, in a subject area. The, the same test done in adults, only 5% show genius. And a lot of that is because as we grow, we're conditioned and we're, you know, uh, basically pounded into us that we should get a job and then we should work, you know, certain hours and we should do certain things. And, and that's what's great about the fitpreneurs, you know, people listening like yourselves, like you're listening to this show, you've already kind of broke from the from the general population thinking of that you have to work for someone else and that there's you know people who own businesses are, are born into that or are raised differently like you've already you already have that mindset that you're in control of your own schedule and you can work for yourselves and then as you grow you you move along and you you realize that you know you don't actually have to do the work it's knowing how to do the work and the plan that's important which is being the business owner and then moving to fitpreneur where basically now you can go into other avenues and you can expand and you can help more people that's the journey you'll go on but the the key is is starting to understand what your genius is and that's what's why it's so important is because when you know what your genius is you can operate now at a different level and you can really avoid the things that aren't in your genius and i was just talking to a company yesterday a guy that i've known for a long time and uh they're already um uh, i think it's three or four times ahead of uh, projected revenue for the year, and we're only two months in, right? And so they've already they've already done multiple millions. They're four times ahead of their projected revenue, and we were talking about what changed. And basically, him and his partner, um, the end of last year, sat down, kind of started assessing stuff, 
And what they found were they're doing a lot of things outside of their genius. And so by being able to delegate, to say no to opportunities that don't fit, and to hire people in the right places to to essentially, um, uh, you know, um, make them better at what they do because they're they're only now doing what they're best at has allowed them to grow so much quicker than they thought and so i think that that's you know where a lot of businesses see the growth is when they realize okay like this is the type of person i am who do i need to put around me in order to bring my best side out yeah definitely something which is also also worth mentioning like aj talked about a little bit which is um con- conditioning is that you can have uh, you know your zone of genius that over time is is hammered down by other people um you know and people um you know help you suppress it yourself by the people and, and influence and we've talked about this on previous episodes which is you know the people that you're around all it takes is one influential person that you respect to give you the insight and give you the motivation and give you the the vision that can start to tap into that zone of genius that you already have inside you and so if you're you know, not where you want to be right now, or you, you're at a certain growth point and you've gone to where you want to be, but you want to get even bigger, then we've got some great resources um, here today, which AJ is going to talk about, so starting off with uh, the Colby Index, which is going to help you really identify what key areas you can start to focus on. And, uh, and, the, and the other, more importantly, the other areas that aren't your zone of genius, that you can start to look to get other people to take on board in your fitness business. Yeah, and I think that that's what the when you like you said when you can get people to take on board, but what it is is really knowing the difference between what you're good at, what you're great at and then what you're a genius at, right? Because all of us as we go through our journey, we'll, we'll do a lot of things and we may be good at it, we may even be great at it, but is that our genius, right? And so for me, there's a lot of areas that I'm very good at. I'm very good at marketing. I'm very good at copywriting. But what I'm what I'm best at is that, like I said, the big vision stuff. And so the more I do that, the happier I am. Can I do the other stuff? Absolutely. And a lot of times when you're starting in business um, and you're building your, your fitness uh, you know, studios and gyms, like you do do a lot of stuff. But here's what is um, it's important and, and move to the, the mindset stuff. Um, if you think about it, what frustrates you, what annoys you, what, what takes all your time, you know, what are you pulling your hair out, you know, basically saying, oh, I wish someone else could just do this for me. Those are areas that you may be good at, you, you may be able to do yourself, but the areas that keep you from your genius. And so the more time you're spending over there, the less time you're spending in your genius and, and creativity comes from genius. And so if you're building a business and you don't have time to operate in the flow, if you don't have time to operate in your genius, you don't have time to just really step back and think because you're so busy doing the stuff that you're good and great at. Um, you don't have the opportunity to 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 flourish and the frustrations that come through. And you know, I, we talk to a lot of professionals on the phone. And uh, I don't know about you, Simon, but I know when I'm talking to a lot of people, their frustration is they feel they have this burning desire inside. They know that they're they're here for a bigger reason, but they're getting so caught up in the minutia, so caught up in like what software to use or what autoresponder system to put into place or what's the best marketing strategy that like that we know. And not really what's the best for them, you know, um, not picking something and just having, you know, getting the, someone who knows the system to just run it for them so they don't have the learning curve. And, you know, I think that that's the, the biggest, <clears throat> you know, I work mainly with, with companies that are already, already going. And the reason for that is, is because they've already figured out that that stuff really doesn't matter as much as just having it there, right? What, what software system you use, what, what, you know, how you collect your money in terms of what um, merchant account you have, like none of that stuff really Really matters. You just have to have something in place. You can tweak and change it later on. But so many people get caught up in that beginning phase, and they're caught up trying to do everything. And uh, you know, they're not able to really do the things that they're good at. And uh, you know, that's I think one of the biggest mistakes as professionals. Uh, we can make is thinking that we need to do it all and, and that we need to know it all and that we need to be really good at it all. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, people get caught up in, in purchasing course after course after course and they get frustrated because they're like, well, I have all the information. Why is it not working? Well, a lot of times it's not working because it's not what you're learning is great information, but it may not be the right information for you. And that's what I spend a lot of time with people on is basically figuring out, well, what should you be doing? You know, what do you actually like doing? Some people love writing. Other 
people love doing videos. It's two totally different skill sets, right? Um, and some people want to just train. Some people want to run multiple facilities. And so it's really about it's really about knowing yourself, which all goes back to the mindset stuff, right? Yeah, definitely. And there's a big thing on comparison also that people are constantly comparing themselves to each other and they feel that they, should, like you say, should be doing everything. And also there's that difference between being a, a business owner, being the artist, the manager and the entrepreneur, and then switching your brain from having to do everything um, on your own to then starting to think strategically about you know, reinvesting and getting other people to do the things that you're not so good at. And so people like ownership. It's like, well, I want to be, you know, I need to do everything myself. I've got to do, you know, learn everything. And yes, it's good to have that vast knowledge. But oftentimes this is that cycle that I so often talk about, which is gain a stimulant, read a book, watch a webinar, listen to a podcast, get the information, you get a buzz from it. Don't take action, cycle round, learn something new, get a stimulant from it. Don't take action properly. And really, it's all about following through to make sure that you get the maximum return on your time. Um, and, uh, and so tapping into this zone of genius isn't just about going into a flow state. And if you love to do videos doing that, it's about really understanding where your, where the biggest assets are in your skill set, so that you can then look to palm off the things that you're not best at. Yeah. And you, you mentioned something there, the cycle. And I talk about that too, that the, for those listening that, that are in that cycle and have recognized, Hey, they're talking to me right now. So here's, here's the cycle. Most people who are struggling do they learn, they have an idea, then they destroy the idea because they think of all the things that could go wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. The difference between them and someone who's kicking ass is literally the people kicking ass learn, have the idea, think of the things that could go wrong and then say, fuck it, I'll try it anyway. And what they do is they do it and then they reevaluate and do it again and reevaluate and do it again. You know, and that's what I was just talking to a guy about his Facebook advertising campaign. We were looking at his numbers and it was costing him $600 to make an 18, to sell an $1,800 um, package, right? So it was 3x return on investment. It's a pretty good return on investment, right? Spend 600, make 800. Spend 600, make 800. Most investors, if you went to them and say you're going to make them three times their money back in a week, they would give you as much money as they can. It's, it's a phenomenal return. However, he didn't see it like that. He saw it as it was costing him $600 to get a person. And so it was a third of the money he was making was going towards marketing and advertising. And I think that's because a lot of people, you mentioned ownership, a lot of people want 100% of everything. And they don't realize that. And if you study real businesses, most real businesses don't operate on huge profit margins. The airline industry is probably the worst. And they operate at about a 2 to 3% profit margin. Um, most large corporations operate about a 10 to 15 in the entrepreneurial world we're lucky we get to operate on much higher margins but it's phenomenal i have a questionnaire that I, they take people through when they start working with me and i'll ask them like what's your marketing budget and oftentimes it's zero right and then they uh -huh. and they, they they write back and there's a bunch of other questions but they write back they say i think i'm starting to understand why my business is not growing Right. And that's the thing. It's got you got to you got to figure out, like, could you get your costs down? Absolutely. Like me and Simon both know tricks and, and tips that you can like lower your your your, uh, you know, cost for set to, to acquire a new member of the gym. However, if you're doing 600 and it's making 800, there's no reason you can't just crank that up and then figure out how to lower those costs. But most people don't don't reevaluate. If they do end up doing something, he was looking at it as a failure, right? He was looking at it as, man, it cost me a lot of money to get one sale. And I'm looking at it like, no, now you have your numbers, right? How much money can you spend? How much can money can you reinvest? And that's the difference. Like That's the way you have to start shifting your mind is everything is not – it's not a, a – you don't win or lose. It's Everything's an opportunity to learn and grow from. I have a, I have a tip for anyone in the situation, um, uh, advice, free advice in fact, <laughs> uh, for, for anyone who is in the situation of I don't have anything to invest in my business. This is the big one, okay? So if you don't have any money to invest in your business, here it is. And you might want to get a pen and paper for this one. Spend less than you earn and invest the rest. That's it. Spend less than you earn and invest the bit in between. That's it. Yeah, if, you're not, so, if you're not paying yourself a salary right now, 
now and you're just taking the money that com- that's left over at the end of the month. You're already making fatal flaw, you know, and maybe we should do an episode on fatal flaws um, because I think we probably could pull pull a bunch out. But, you know, honestly, right, right there is the key. Like you have to be – if you're currently at a certain level of income and you're – you know, you want to make more but you're actually – you, all your bills are paid and and um, th- and whatnot. Then you make more. You shouldn't blow that money on new stuff. You should blow that money on reinvestment in the gym. And so I think that that's a, a huge tip. Most people probably listening, if they're making that mistake, can can fix immediately. And you'll be amazed at how quickly your business can grow. And I think that the this I know the success I've had with my clients, and probably same for you, uh, but I won't speak for you, is that they start to understand that. Holy crap! If I just crank my marketing budget up and and we teach a very simple funnel right we don't have complex funnels like a lot of people think you need um it's literally marketing sales and delivery so it's a three step funnel um but uh people realize okay it, i don't need to to do much of a million things what i need to do is take one thing and really dial it in and drive it up and by doing that, now I'm in control of lead flow. I'm in control of sales uh, conversations. And, you know, I can make as much or as little as I choose to make based on my willingness to commit to reinvesting in my business. Absolutely. So, AJ, Colby Index. Yeah, so there's two tests that I really recommend everyone take. Um, I've, done, I've done both of these. We've both done both of these. In fact, I don't have my test in front of me, but. Um, and uh, basically you want to take the Colby Index and another one, Wealth Dynamics and Simon, uh, Wealth Dynamics is actually done by Roger Hamilton, friend of mine, he's a maverick so you'll you'll get to meet him, he does uh, some amazing work and is really a future paced trendsetter um, and uh, big thinker so so you'll get to meet him, he's an awesome guy Um, but anyway, back to those two so basically what they'll do is, they're almost like personality tests um, but they show you how your mind operates Um, and so you take this test and basically it's just a series of questions and ser- scenario questions and you answer them um, you know gut instincts what's your first reaction and you go through that and at the end it tells you what kind of person you are and so like I said for me I'm a creative quick start so pretty much like I come up with big ideas I, I, I have the I know how to start the idea so I, I can create the plans but in terms of like execution long term like I get bored of stuff really easy and uh, it's probably a big reason I've built multiple companies and I, I've worked with a lot of different people um, is because I enjoy the building of, right? And uh, a lot of people, that's what they do. They build businesses, they sell businesses, they move on, they build another business, right? It's that thrill, that, that excitement. Other people, though, they're not creative at all, um, and, but they have other skill sets. And so what you may find as a business owner is that you're not a creative guy. And so when you're looking to partner with someone, what you can do is have them take these tests as well. And then you can say, well, does this contribute me or does this clash with me? And what you find is if you get someone who's just like you, you can be best buddies. But if you partner together on something in order to actually build a business, then we have a problem. Because you gotta stop. You gotta stop drinking that, that monster. It's giving you problems. Because um, <laughs> what happens is, is that essentially now you both come up with amazing ideas, and in fact, you'll probably create the biggest, best ideas you've ever thought of before together because you feed off each other. But if neither of you is a follow through, neither of you is a person um, who is detail orientated, right? Neither of you is like that operations manager that a lot of companies have. Um, then the plan will never manifest because essentially what you've what you've got is two guys who love to come up with ideas, but you don't have a guy who whose uh, his passion is execution. And it sounds weird because a lot of times, like you think those other people don't really exist because it's not your thing. But you know, think of your accountant. Like those people basically plug numbers in all day long. I, that would drive me nuts, spreadsheets and numbers and things like that. But these people build successful businesses, and uh, they seem – my accountant's happy as a uh, girl, Larry. Uh, she's an awesome lady, and she seems to love what she does. If I did that, it would drive me nuts. But you know, it, it's people like that who you need to find to grow your business. Um, and, but really what you need to do is figure out who the heck you are first. How do you operate? The more you know what your operating system is, the more you can start to see the world in a different – you can look through a different lens because you understand how you're looking and how someone else is looking. And so instead of getting frustrated with someone who may not see things the way you do, now you can see how 
they they you know contribute you and how you can work together and wh- what's best suited for them and i think that it's those two tools are, are the most powerful things you could gifts you could give yourself and i know there's another one uh, strength finder um, strength finder a, there's a book and then there's an assessment tool with that it's the same concept there it's basically figuring out you know what 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 is it that you're best at what are you very very best at that's the the key definitely and uh, I think it's important to notice also that, you know, particularly, particularly when we're, like you say, uh, taking on staff and stuff, you know, our, you know, values and uh, standards are going to be different based on someone else's. And that's why it's really important to, to really understand, like AJ says, where you're at, but also where other people are. Because oftentimes, you know, we could take, take someone on or get involved with someone but we don't really know their zone of genius. And so they could be spending loads of time doing something where actually if we knew what was their strength, we could really properly tap into that. Yeah, and I think that's the key, right? Like it's it's funny. I think because we're fitness in, in, in the fitness industry and, and uh, you know, both having fitness backgrounds, I think you could relate to this as well. But um, essentially like when when you're figuring out like in the gym, what you need to do, you're actually looking for your weaknesses, right? So you're trying to find your weaknesses and then you go and you, you, you strengthen those. So if you have a mobility weakness, um, then you, you find exercises that will fix kind of your limitations. If you have soft tissue problems, you go and you seek out an expert to help you with the soft tissue stuff. Um, you know, strength wise, like to build strength, what you're looking for is what's the weakest link in the chain. So, you know, which muscle group is not firing correctly? What muscle group is weak? What do I need to strengthen? So you're always looking for those weaknesses and then fixing those weaknesses the difference in businesses is you don't need to fix those weaknesses and so the 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 biggest thing is and and I think a lot of people may get a little bit of relief from this you know from the pressure that they may be feeling and everything they need to do as a business owner is like here's the deal if you're an amazing trainer and we sit down and talk about your vision and what you want to do and your vision is to be an amazing trainer like maybe it's to be like a Jillian Michaels or um you know a TV trainer and um and maybe you have that vision then your best bet on yourself is to find someone who is everything that you're not. So find the marketer, right? Find the salesperson. You don't have to become that person because at the end of the day, you're going to hate marketing and sales, right? But if you're a trainer who, when you when we talk about vision, is talking about open multiple facilities, having a team, doing all these things, then then your best asset is learning how to to build a team around you that supports your genius. Um, and allows you to do those things and to be a business owner. Um, and it's a different mindset and it's a different skill set and it's going to require different team members around you. And so there's not a right way or a wrong way. It's just the right way for you, right? And I think that for a lot of trainers, they open their own places and basically they own their own job. But if we actually talked about it, they don't have the vision to be a business owner. There's nothing wrong with that when you understand that. Um, but there's no reason you couldn't go and find a partner who is a marketing specialist or is a marketing and sales specialist, partner with them, bring them into the gym. You, know, you can pay them a salary or you can give them ownership in the company. Um, but, but now you have the team, you have the dynamic duo that will that con that will work together and and will work off of each other and produce something of brilliance and I think that that's the key is knowing when you know who you are now you know who you have to surround yourself with and I think that in in entrepreneurship I think that's the biggest mistake we see is a lot of people and you may have experienced this uh, you know that you talk to them and they have this vision of of building let, let's say uh, you know ten gyms um, but then when you talk to them they're working you know, training people 40 hours a week. They don't have time to work on the business. And so the obvious solution is, well, hire another trainer. Well, I can't hire another trainer because I don't have the money. Well, until you hire another trainer, you can't follow your vision, right? So you're going to have this feeling of uh, playing small. You're going to have this frustration from being held back. But until you let go of the training, then you're not going to be able to build the business, you see. And so everyone has to, I think, know, you got to know your role. Right. And, you, and, and um, uh, there's a book, uh, Sacred Hoops by Phil Jackson, and it talks about how he built the Chicago Bulls. And obviously he went on to L.A. Lakers and, and won more championships there. And now he's at uh, I think he's back with the New York Knicks, Knicks now. Um, and I'm sure he'll end up winning a championship with them as well. Greatest NBA coach 
um, I think. But his book, Sacred Hoops, that was actually a book I read when I was a very young teenager. I think it was the first book that ever introduced me to like like mindset stuff. But the biggest thing that he talked about was being able to build a team, right? So he had Michael Jordan, but he built a team around Michael Jordan that made Michael Jordan who he was. Not that Michael Jordan wasn't a phenomenal player, but in his rookie season and and uh, and that, like he he wasn't you know. Um, the best he could be because he didn't have the supporting cast. Same with like LeBron James, right? And we see that now. It's about building the team around the superstar. The superstar becomes a bigger superstar when they have the right people around. You don't win championships just by having a superstar on your team. And there's many teams that have that. Um, you know, there's many teams that should on paper win that don't because they just don't have the team. So if you want to win in business, you got to think of it like that. You got to build your team and who's your supporting like staff to make you you're the superstar, to make you live in your genius, to be in flow, um, to eliminate the stress, the distractions, the frustrations, all those things that hold you back and, and keep you small. If I look back to when I was a, a trainer, um, you know, I love to train and, and coach people, but I was always loving the marketing side. I was, oh, excuse me, I'll just hit the mic. Um, <laughs> excuse me? I don't even know if anyone heard that. That's crazy. Um so I always loved it. I did love the training, but I loved the marketing and the and the creative side more. And so that really showed that I wasn't tapping into my zone of genius by training people. It was, you know, I went into the fitness industry, yes, because I wanted to help more people. And, I, and I, did, I did love being a trainer and I still do love the fitness industry. But for me, I get excited by, you know, the marketing, the sales, the business side of things. And, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. So Guys, here's some questions that you want to ask yourself. So the first question you want to ask yourself is, you know, what do you enjoy doing? Okay, and you want to write these down. What do you enjoy doing that you think about doing even when you are not doing it? Yeah, so what do you enjoy doing that you think about doing even when you're not doing it? So what you, the next question you should ask yourself is really, um, when you when you're doing it, the whatever it is, you know what what is it that you do that makes you completely forget everything else in the world and basically consumed by it in the moment. So while you're while you're doing this activity, um, whether it's training, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales, right, and all of those are actually different skill sets. Um, whether it's customer service, like in, in experience, you know, what is it that you get lost in the moment? Like you're not on your cell phone, you're not checking things, you're not thinking about anything else. It's just while you're doing it, it's kind of like that's like the magic moment for you, and you could do it all day, every day, all day long. The next question you want to ask yourself is what subject is it that you buy books, courses, attend seminars, and are always learning? You know, I'm very strategic in my coaching how i help grow fitness studios for example but now i've over the past 12 months and aj seen this happen is that i've gotten more and more into the mindset because it's really helped me grow ex- exponentially my business and now now i'm adopting more of more of that into my coaching and that's my now becoming my zone of genius is is helping people remove blocks and, o- and overcome things so that then when we implement the business strategy, it becomes easier. And so I buy books and courses and attend te- seminars around these topics. And I'm always focused on what's my biggest challenge. And then I hyper-focus on it and I learn intensively and go into complete immersion and learn that stuff. So if you look on your bookshelf, what are the things that you naturally go to buy? Okay. Yeah, I bought like 12 new books in the last week on a, on a subject that I'm working on creating a course and things like that because um you know, I started you start digging and you start you see a reference to another book and see so then you buy that book and when I look at what's on my bookshelf, you know, I got I got I got a, a shelf that has, you know, um some some training books and stuff like that on I got DVDs and things like that but the the rest of this you know I got three different bookshelves here but only a shelf really has training information I have one nutrition product and I always joke around and say I never was you know I never have been a nutrition person and uh you know lucky now my my partner she's a nutritionist so that definitely helps but um you know that's what you if you just look at what you own or what you've invested in it's probably going to tell you what you're most passionate about and so if you're a trainer who you know every weekend you go to a seminar on training 
um, there's a good chance that you love training more than you love the business side of it. So um, you got to start looking at, okay, well, I do want to grow my business. So do I need to bring in a partner, a strategic partner that's going to help me do that? Or am I not interested in that stuff because I haven't explored it? You know, you may not have explored it yet. But, you know, again, if like if, if learning the marketing side of stuff makes you dr- drives you crazy, there's people out there that would that, that do this for a living. Right. There's companies you can partner with, individuals you can partner with. Um, you, you're not alone to do this. You know, you don't have to build your business all on your all on your own. You can you know, can hire a mentor to show you the way you can hire people to do it for you. So you don't have to do it yourself. There's lots of options, but really that's what you got to look at. You know, what am I so passionate about that, you know, I, I basically stay up at night watching videos and learning and things like that. I can't tell you how many hours and hours and hours of stuff that I've watched, you know, um, like uh, of, of training, marketing information, uh, courses that I have and things like that. So um, it, that's really what you, you got to think of. The, uh, the next question you ask yourself um, is what comes easier naturally to you? So what is it um, that you don't have to try to do? So, you know, what is it that you, if you, you've gotten in a conversation with a friend and you start talking about a subject, what is it that you could talk about and provide value in um, and help someone with without having to, you know, go back to a resource or having to check, you know, fact check something? What is it you can just riff on? What is it that you just can just go? You could stand up in front of a crowd. You could give you a whiteboard and you could talk all day long on. So, when, you know, what is it that you do that is just effort, effortless and very natural for you? You know, doesn't feel forced or feel like you, you're having to make yourself do it. 100%. Just something going back onto the last tip, which is uh, books and courses and stuff. Um one good thing to do is if you start – because oftentimes you'll buy a book which is based on a topic that maybe you want to learn about because you've heard about it and then you don't really know. If you start reading a book and like within a couple of chapters, you find it like – you ever read a book and it's like, oh, I need to read this, but it's just a drain of like chugging through it. Like just literally ditch that book and move on to another one. You just want to – you know, you want to get a book and it – when you start reading it, you, you want to be excited by reading it and going through it. And so I found myself in this pattern of just literally trying to read and go through content. And it's just like, seriously, I'm learning stuff, but it's a pain. It's like, that's not the stuff to learn. That's not the stuff to learn. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that that's a key too. Like people think, oh, I have to do this. Like if I go to a movie, if I don't enjoy the movie, I walk out just because I paid my, you know, 13 bucks or whatever. I don't care. Like I'm not going to sit there for two hours, waste my time on something. Same with TV shows. If I'm, you know, if someone's recommended a TV show, like a lot of people, like different business ones, like The Prophet and Celebrity Apprentice and things like that, people will say, hey, you should, you should watch that. It's really good. You know, you learn stuff too. But if I'm watching something and I'm not getting anything out of it, then, then I turn it off, you know, and then I do watch TV for entertainment purposes too. But in terms of like, you know, if it's not entertaining me or I'm not learning something from it, I'm moving on to the next thing. Um, and, uh, and one way I've actually done that without, uh, you know, skipping subjects, so to speak. So, I, you know, I studied mindset stuff early and so Simon's finally catching up, but, um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but like in terms of the business side of stuff, cause, cause, you know, that, there's different segments of business. Business is not just one thing, right? Um, but uh, what I've what I've done recently to avoid necessarily having to, you know, find subjects that I like or don't like is a lot of these, uh, like a lot of places now will offer you book summaries, and you can you can be a pay to have a membership, and each week you get uh, access to certain books and things like that. And so they'll do like the top ten, uh, you know, each week the the bestsellers and things like that, and, and it's like a dissection of the book. And what I found is, is a lot of times if that piques my interest, like the, the topic piques my interest, and I'll, I'll invest in the book to dig deeper in the subject. Um, but it gives you an overview of the different books. And so it's kind of, it's a way to hack, but it's also a way to see if the subject interests you without spending the money on the book. And so, um, like success.com, they have, um, Success Magazine, they have um, uh, uh, one of these, uh, you know, book summary clubs, basically, that, that, that gives you, you know, I think it's a couple of pages, uh, book summary. Um, there's another one I do that does audio, but uh, it's 20 minutes audio summary download of a book. But the reason I do that is because, you know, they, they cover different subjects. And then if there is an area I like or a book that I think is going to help, um, then I can invest in that. Because what I've found is as as obviously I'm an avid reader uh, and consumer of, of information. Um, and the, the problem is a lot of times, a lot of, a lot of topics 
the books cover pretty much the same thing. So you get the book and you start skimming and you're like, oh, there's really nothing new here apart from the story around the concepts and fluff. So I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for nuggets. Um, and so some, there's now, now ways you can do that without having to purchase the book, you know, and if you're, uh, the, some of the books too, like sometimes there's not, some books you don't need to purchase a physical book. You can just do an audio book because uh, something like a biography, you don't necessarily need the physical book there. You know, whereas there's other like business books that have worksheets and stuff like that. And like the audio book doesn't, mm. is like boring for that. Well, right? So you got to, you know, you pick and choose your battles and you kind of figure out, you know, what is it you like? Test the waters in other areas just, you know, just to see. But <laughs> essentially, you know, um, there's, there's things out there, ways to like shortcut that, uh, without, you know, like, like you said, you know, one of the ways is if you're reading something and it d- isn't enjoyable to you, just discard it. You know, uh, Amazon has their exchange program. Now you can sell the book back. You can give the book away. You know, uh, you don't have to decorate your walls with books you don't like. If you're bored of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've already so, lost them if they're bored of this episode we already lost them so they didn't even hear that yeah, we, so. we lost yeah they didn't hear that yeah. um you know the lunchbox diet before it was published by harper collins i you know i you know that was like three pages and then i turned it into a 13 page ebook and it and it got all the the reviews from our magazine and it was the reason why people loved it was because it just it was condensed into basically do this get the result right and uh you know, Harper Collins, they, you know, they wanted me to pad it out into a, into a bigger book for when it was printed up. But, you know, I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm called Simon for a reason, you know, keep it simple, get the result, you know, keep it simple, get the result. Yeah, you're definitely so, simple, Simon, for sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so finally, just guys, just build a team to complement your genius. Um, you know, using these resources, asking these questions, you know, ask it, a, ask it a better question, get a better result. And if, you know, if you're not in the financial position you want to be, then it's all about being resourceful. If you've got the passion, if you've got the determination, if you've got the focus and you, you can be persuasive, then you can create something from nothing. I've done it many a time, not just with one business, multiple businesses where I haven't had any start in capital and I've used my passion, my creative. And once you, and here's the thing, once you tap into your zone of genius and you understand what your strength is, you can leverage that to maximize the things that you do need. Absolutely. So this week's challenge is simply to just take the Colby and the Wealth Dynamic tests. Seriously, it would be one of the best things you, you ever do. You take those, you understand how you operate, and you can actually see what your weaknesses are. And you can start avoiding uh, you know, the things that don't let you operate in your genius so that you can do more of what you love and grow your business uh, a much, much faster pace than you're currently on. Yeah. As always, guys, we want to hear from you. You can uh, connect with us personally, uh, facebook.com slash boylovel, B-O-Y-L-O-V-E-L-L. Do not ask why. Uh, facebook.com slash AJ Roberts. Also, head and give us a five-star review on iTunes uh, and head to fitpreneurs.com and make sure you don't miss out on any episodes. Hit that subscribe button. And really, seriously, we do read those reviews. I was actually checking out the other day all the reviews that we've been getting and just, just put your name in there and say something quirky, like make them as funky as you like. It's like we read those and just makes us smile. So really appreciate those that are listening that have already invested just a few minutes to go and give us those those reviews this is all about serving you guys we we don't pitch anything we don't sell anything we might do in the future hey who knows but right now we're not pitching or selling anything um and so we just want to serve you to the best of um, our ability of course if you want uh, to work with me or myself or aj more closer then you go to the website you've got links to our websites and you can do as you need to but really this is about serving you helping you grow and keeping most of all keeping your brain continuously it, you know, with the information and action steps to help you grow um, exponentially in your fitness business. Yeah, I will leave you with this quote by Albert Einstein. The difference between stupidity and genius is that genius has its limits. We will see you next time on another episode of The Fitpreneurs. Guys, thanks for the killer episode. Listen, if you want to take your fitness business to the next level, terminate your competition, create ultimate freedom, buy new houses, cars, which could blow up, travel the world, or open your own gym where you can lift really heavy weights, then head to www.thefitpreneurs.com slash free call for details on how to apply for your free accelerator call. 
Until the next episode, hasta la vista, fit pros.